Running back Trey Ragos ran for two touchdowns, caught a Levi Lewis pass for another and added a two-point conversion run to lead number 21 UL to a 24-21 inches win over Appalachian State on a rainy Friday night in Boone, North Carolina. The win was the first for UL, 9, 1 inches, 7, 1 inches Sun Belt, in its seven-year history with the Mountaineers, 7, 3 inches, 5, 2 inches, losing the previous eight matchups. The Cajuns went up midway through the third quarter with a 17-yard run by Ragos, and the conversion by Ragos made it 17, 10 inches. Ragos followed a one-yard run before the third quarter was done, but with less than seven minutes remaining in Appalachian State safety off an errant snap during a punt room the Cajun advantage to 24, 19 inches. A second safety, this one intentional, made it 24, 21 inches with 146 left, allowing App State a chance to force overtime with a field goal, but Chandler Staten's 30-yard attempt with five seconds left missed wide left. Appalachian State struck first, getting a 33-yard Nate Null touchdown run through a huge hole with just less than seven minutes left in the first quarter. UL responded with 6.25 remaining second quarter as Lewis delivered an 8-yard touchdown throw to Ragos out of the backfield, but the Cajuns could not convert the path. A 26-yard Kenneth Almonders field goal with 26 seconds left before halftime cut the Mountaineers led to 10, 9 inches. What we learned about Friday night's game. NFL prospect Trey Ragos has what it takes for the next level. Ragos, a senior NFL draft prospect known for his bowling ball running style, had to help himself in the ESPN televised win. The product of Archbishop Shuahai from New Orleans had 43 hard-earned yards on 12 carries. His fellow Cajuns running back, Elijah Mitchell, who had 95 on 12 rushes, already has accepted a senior bowl invitation. Now it may not be long before the 5'10", 230-pound Ragos accepts an invite to a bowl game for NFL prospects, too. More important to Ragos for the moment is that UL finally snapped its futility streak against App, which include four losses the past two years. Some alumni are always talking about that they have the best team, they have the best class, he said. We can finally say we've got the better team. Snapping in the rain a major issue. With rain pouring down as expected, UL's first two deliveries from Paul Boudreau sailed past punter Reese Burns, proved that a wet ball is not a long snapper's friend. The Cajuns paid a price for it, too, as App State's first touchdown came eight plays after one went sailing over the head of Burns. That wasn't the only high cost. Boudreaux's snap after Lewis' TD throw to Ragos also was high, forcing holder Dallin Camber to try a conversion throw to Almonders that fell incomplete. When Boudreaux snapped another one through Camber's hands late in the first half, though, the Cajuns caught a break. Appalachian State called a timeout just beforehand, and the snap was perfect for Almonders' field goal just before halftime. The snap was high again following the second Ragos TD run, but this time Camber got it down. Then it only got worse, a third high snap on a punt got behind Burns with 6.36 left and Burns had to kick it out of the end zone, cutting the Cajun lead to 5 points. Passing in the rain isn't much easier. It wasn't nearly as bad as UL vs. UL Monroe in 2016, when Cajuns quarterback Anthony Jennings threw for exactly zero yards, he finished 2 for 5 in a driving rainstorm. But it was apparent quickly that throwing in the rain would be no easy task for Lewis either on Friday. Lewis opened 1 of 6 in the opening quarter, completing only a 25-yard pass to freshman Dante Fleming, he finished 8 of 23 for 101 yards. UL's defense can create turnovers. UL went into the game with 13 interceptions, tied for second most nationally. Outside linebacker Chani Manak added to the total with another when he rose high to pick off Zach Thomas in the second quarter. It wasn't the only first-half turnover for the Cajun defense, after linebacker Lorenzo McCaskill, accompanied by Farrad Gardner and Jacqueline Nelson, popped running back Cam Peoples, defensive lineman Zion Hill scooped up the fumble near midfield to set up Ragos TD catch. Cornerback Mekhi Garner had another Cajuns interception in the third quarter. 
Manak and Gardner also were in on the huge fourth down sack that gave UL back back following the first safety, with just more than two minutes left. Gardner had 10 total tackles and Manak 6 including two TFLs.